you know what, this is probably a step too far. It's not that old. There's a 10 stack CD player in the boot. But you know what, I'm feeling nostalgic. Well, I can hear you already. James, why are we driving a 25-year-old Mercedes on a TV show that is famous for heading to great destinations in, fundamentally, brand new cars? Well, the thing is, there is a brand new car coming. In fact, it's the brand new version of this, the all-new Mercedes-Benz C-Class. But today, we are heading to the Pyrenees region of Victoria, and it's an area that is full of history and tells some amazing stories. So I thought it was only fair to tell the story and share some history of the C-Class on the way there. About two hours from Melbourne, the Pyrenees region of Western Victoria is at the southern end of the Great Dividing Range. And it's best known for its historic gold mining towns and award-winning red wines. We're starting our drive from the regional hub of Ballarat, which means we've got some time to get better acquainted with our little red Mercedes. So yes, this is the first ever Mercedes-Benz C-Class, the W202. And it was launched in around 1993 and ran through to around the year 2000. And it was the first of the, the alphabet class of Mercedes-Benz that we know today, where we have C-Class and E-Class and S-Class, and of course now A, B, CLA and the rest of the alphabet. But the whole point is, at the time, this car grew from the success of its predecessor, the 190E, which was the first ever compact modern Mercedes-Benz. And it was so successful that the German brand decided that this was a direction that they needed to go in. And it was a way that they could take all of their capability, the comfort, the luxury, and the quality from their larger cars and reduce it into a compact size. So if you learn anything today, you know that the C is for compact. When it launched, the W202 C-Class included a driver's airbag and integrated side impact protection in all models. It was then updated to be one of the first cars with a standard passenger airbag and introduced some automotive technology firsts that we still use in cars today. Now you'll also note that this is not just a regular base level C200. This is the C36 AMG, which was the most powerful C-Class of its time but it was also the first ever Mercedes AMG model that you could buy from a dealer. And now these days, everything has an AMG badge, even the floor mats. You can probably see that this car has a very early uh, rain sensing windscreen. It's not actually raining, there's a bit of light probably on the sensor, but my mono wiper, the singular wiper that covers more surface area of the windscreen than two wipers can do. And if you look at one of these things really closely, the engineering behind that singular windscreen wiper is so mind-blowing that it does remind you that this car is still very much of that era where they were engineered to the nth degree to be the best in the world. Coming up, James continues toward the Pyrenees and ups his technology by taking a step into the future. The car has swallowed my in excess tape and will not give it back. Mercedes guys, uh, I'm going to need that back. I don't know how you're going to get it out, but please, if you can help me, I would very much appreciate it. James is heading to the beautiful Pyrenees region of Western Victoria and he's about ready to upgrade his modern classic Mercedes to a really modern Mercedes. Now, if you're wondering where we've got to with cars of today, 
cast the reminder back, this is 25 years old. We've got a carbon fibre inlay here on our dash and, and, and above the dashboard, which we see in modern cars today. It's done about 166,000 kilometres. It is absolutely immaculate, this thing. It is a, a, a very lovely car, but I tell you what, it still has the three-pointed star on the bonnet, and it is something that I miss driving modern Mercedes-Benz cars because I love that. Sitting out proudly, uh, highlighting the road ahead, it's a, uh, a pretty impressive thing. And so a car like this, a little Mercedes on beautiful touring roads like this as we approach the Pyrenees region, it really does show that that approach that Mercedes-Benz has had to modern technology and touring cars was as relevant then as it is today. So as we look to the past as a way of understanding how we've got to the future, it only makes sense that we step forward into that future. And I can see it coming right up ahead. Well, welcome to the future. This is the all new Mercedes-Benz C-Class, the W206. So, if your counting is correct, four generations on from the lovely red little C36 we've just been in. And I can tell you what, as it still is a C-Class, it's still very much a Mercedes-Benz, but it does feel like decades and decades forward, more so than the, the 25 years of development, just due to the, the tech and the implementation in this car. And I guess if you are looking for a way to understand what the future of motoring is going to be like, this is a really, really good indication. We're driving the 2022 Mercedes-Benz C300, and it's powered by a two litre turbocharged four cylinder petrol engine with 190 kilowatts and 400 Newton meters. It has a nine speed automatic transmission and is rear wheel drive. What's more, there is a 48 volt mild hybrid system that helps with efficiency around town, as well as offering a boost to the petrol engine under heavy acceleration. And before you ask, yes, it does have AMG floor mats. Look at this photograph. Every time I do, it makes me laugh. Now, the first things that strike you when you do step into the future, into the new C-Class, particularly from the older car, is, well, first of all, just how quiet it is in here, but also how much more space there is. And so I guess this is how we tie all of this in today. Our trip, we are currently on the Sunraysia Highway, heading north to the Pyrenees. And this is a wonderful touring drive. And we wanna show you that you can do this in a car that we tend to associate with executive car parks and shopping centers. Because out here on the open road, I tell you what, the C-Class is brilliantly at home. You've got an amazing array of driver assistance technology, but in terms of being a relaxed and roomy and comfortable and luxurious way to conduct some delightful touring around a really, really pretty part of Victoria, I couldn't think of a better place to be. Ready for some quick European history? The Pyrenees Mountains form the border between modern day France and Spain but for about a thousand years leading up to the 19th century, a small region on the western side of the range was known as the Kingdom of Navarre. Here too in Victoria, on the western tip of the Pyrenees, is a town called Navarre. Now the Pyrenees is, it's a well-known name, but it's a very little understood area. It's again, it's just off the beaten track, but it is known as one of Victoria's premier wine making regions and we're going to make a stop at a winery today just to really understand why this area does so well for turning grapes into a very refreshing drop to have with your next meal. Wine growing started here in the late 19th century, just after the Kingdom of Navarre was de-established. But it really took off in the 1960s when French producer Remy Martin planted grapes. The Bordeaux region just north of the Pyrenees in France is home to many of the grape varieties grown here in Victoria, with the soil and weather having many similarities. 
Our first big waypoint on this drive, though, is the historic town of Avoca, which, like so many settlements in Victoria, really sort of blew up during the gold mining boom of the 1800s. Gold was discovered in Avoca during the 1850s, and by 1854, the town had grown from a population of 100 to a bustling 16,000. As the gold rush dissipated near the turn of the century, Avoca and the Pyrenees region turned to crops, sheep, and of course, wine. Now, one of the things I love about these regional areas is so many of these towns have their Anzac Avenue or the Avenue of Honour, which these tree-lined entries to the town basically created as a monument to members of the community who were lost to war. And I tell you what, in autumn, it is just stunning. You've got these beautiful trees. It really does make you want to just get out and keep driving and exploring. And, and I guess this part of Victoria, which we don't normally go to, it really is a bit of a hidden gem. James and his Mercedes-Benz C-Class are exploring the beautiful Pyrenees region of Western Victoria. Now we've turned off the Sunraysia Highway now and we're in the valley between sort of the, the, the peaks here of the Pyrenees. And I tell you what, it is really, really pretty. Sure, it is not the, the craggy peaks of the European namesake, but it really is a, a lovely place to come and do a detour. But we're heading now to a place called Moonamble, which is, I guess, the heart of the Pyrenees region. And there's a winery there where we can speak to some of the team to find out why this area is so well known and respected for its wine making. Yeah, look, the Pyrenees uh, region is just one of the wonderful unsung hero wine regions of, of Victoria or Australia even. It's a little bit on the south side of the Great Divide and the north side of the Great Divide, so it's got great flexibility in the style of wines we produce here. It's just a wonderful area. Reds and whites are sensational. Summerfield specialise in reds, so Shiraz, Cabernet and Merlot, but we also make a Sauvignon Blanc and a Rosé as well and a great sparkling Shiraz. Look, I think, uh, you know, to to say the classic, it's the terroir that, that makes this really so fantastic here. But it's the, the soils that we have, the alluvial soils and the climate, you know, the warm days and the, and the cool nights, it just produces amazingly full flavoured red wines. It's, it's a great place to be. Following a tasty lunch at Summerfield Winery in Moonamble, our drive takes us through the valley to Victoria's Kingdom of Navarre, which is actually just the town of Navarre. A quiet farming community today, Navarre used to form the terminus of the train line, which is still here, kind of. Now, if you want proof that roads don't need tons of switchback corners to be fun and interesting, take a look at this. Now, you might say, James, that looks pretty straight, and you would be right. This is the old railway line that used to run south from Navarre all the way to uh, eventually Portland on the coast, transporting grain and wool, and most importantly, wood from this region. Now, it's long since gone, and rather it being left to rot on the side of the road, you have got now a paved road through where the trains used to run. And what it's done is it's carved essentially a natural tunnel through the trees as we head in a absolutely laser straight line all the way south to our next spot in Landsborough. Let's keep going. I guess this railway road really again tells a story about the history of this area. This really is a magnificent little road to drive down. You can imagine what it would have been like with steam trains full of wood and, and grains and probably livestock back in the heyday of this area. And it's still a tremendously prosperous region, but I guess when things change, the infrastructure needs to adapt. We know that the railway was basically discontinued in the 1950s because the wood that was the predominant freight was no longer as much in demand as, say, coal, which was powering things from that point on. And so, you know, you learn a lot about an area by really seeing what has changed and what it's become. But 
As a driver, what is really cool is the fact that you've got these really brilliantly cambered corners. We're on one of, I think, three corners on the entire run now that you know a train has been able to come around, that it's, it's just that gradual curve, and then it goes into another impossibly straight section. It is really, really cool. And it definitely is part of this kind of a, a, a touring drive that makes things really interesting. Coming up, James continues his European tour through Western Victoria, and we'll show you how to get there. James has taken a Mercedes-Benz and a Mercedes-Benz on a tour of the stunning Pyrenees region of Western Victoria. Coming up, we show you how to get there. Now, something about travelling around regional Australia in a car like a Mercedes-Benz, you don't tend to run into too many others. And a lot of people are concerned in a car like this, thinking, what if you get a puncture? What are you going to do? Are you going to be able to find a rare and exotic tyre type for your Mercedes? Which is why this car and many like it use run-flat tyres. Now, these are tyres that have a, a much higher strength so that if we were unlucky enough to get a puncture, they are able to hold shape and hold a bit of pressure, albeit at probably a reduced speed, long enough for us to be able to make our way to safety of the nearest town for repair or replacement. Now, if your car does have run-flat tyres or you're considering buying run-flat tyres, do check your owner's manual to see what ones suit you or speak to the team at Bob Jane T-Marts to find out all the information you need. Now, it's like we've said on a number of our other episodes uh, at Drive, the diversity of land that you come across on a, on a touring drive uh, around regional Australia is just second to none. So, to give you an idea, out this window we have sheep grazing in a paddock, and out this window we have the rolling ranges of the Pyrenees Mountains. Now, we know there are forests there, we know there are working farms there, and there's just so much going on wherever you look, even right over here, you've got a modern wind farm. Again, it just says, go out and go for a drive in a regional part of Victoria or Australia that you've never been to. Because I tell you what, there is so much to see and it is, it's just so fascinating and so interesting. It is well worth the time spent every time. Well, I tell you what, haven't we all learnt plenty of things today? We've covered off the European Pyrenees in the Kingdom of Navarre, and of course their spectacular namesakes right here in the middle of Western Victoria. We've learned about the history of the Gold Rush, about this region's winemaking capability. We've even covered off regional infrastructure. But most importantly, I've taught you everything there is to know about the Mercedes-Benz C-Class, all the way from W202 right through to the brand new W206. The compact Mercedes has shown us how good it is at being a comfortable, capable and surprisingly efficient tourer out here on the open road, which is arguably outside of its traditional comfort zone. It really is a brilliant little car, regardless of generation. Now, and it's not just because it's got my NXS tape jammed inside, I'm going to steal a little bit more seat time in the little red C36. I'll have fun with that and we'll see you next time for a drive. Our drive started in Ballarat, which is about an hour and a half from Melbourne. We headed north along the Sunraysia Highway through the historic town of Avoca, and then through the Pyrenees Ranges to our lunch stop at Munambal. We then crossed to Navarre on the northwestern side of the Pyrenees, to then turn and head south around the back of the mountains along the old railway line. The final run between Elmhurst and Lexton is a great driver's section, with plenty to see all stages along the route. For more information on pricing and specifications, head to drive.com.au. Plus, get all the details for this drive by scanning the QR code on your screen or visiting us online. Next week, I split the Apple aisle right down the middle and take the Genesis GB70 from Launceston to Hobart. That's next week on Drive. <laughs>